Miss Julia, and today I have someone very important and very special to introduce you to. This is my brother, Jacob. Can you say hello to everyone? Hello! All right, well, before we get started, I think we should ask a question of the day. Our question of the day is, what is your favorite sport? Jake, what's your favorite sport? I'll give you one sport, and that's baseball. You love baseball. I think baseball's great, too. But just to be out of the box, I think my favorite sport is swimming. Swimming? I like swimming. I mean, you know I also like all the other ones, but mm. I want to give variety. Okay. Does that sound good? Mm. Now, we are going to pray. Can I pray? Can you fold your prayer hands, Jake? Thank you. Dear Lord, I thank you so much for this day. I thank you that my brother Jacob could be with our elementary schoolers for a little bit today. And God, I just want to thank you for every single child and grown-up watching. God, I pray that you would bring us closer and closer to you. Thank you that even though we are in a very hard time right now, you are with us and you love us. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. Now, we need to do our scripture memory verse. You know some of the sign language, but I think we should all get a refresher. This is from Psalm 46.1. Do you remember how to do the sign language for God? Good job. God is our refuge and our strength. A very present help. You know help. Yeah, I do. Thumbs up. Yes, right. In trouble. Psalm 46, 1. We're going to do it all together one more time. Ready, set, go. God is our refuge and our strength. A very present help in trouble. Psalm 46, 1. Very good. Jakey, thank you for being with us today. You're welcome. You want to say bye to everybody? Goodbye. Thank you for praying for this family. Good job. High five. All right, everybody. Now it's time for our lesson. I don't know if you remember, but last week we talked about God bringing the Israelites back from exile. It was a wonderful time in the Bible. People were so happy to be coming back to their home. And, you know, even though it was a long journey and even though it wasn't always easy, coming home from exile was a part of God's plan to rescue his people. Now, I don't know if you remember this, but we talked about a few things happening. When the people got back, the first thing they did was they built an altar to the Lord. The second thing that they did was they began to rebuild the temple. Now, I don't know if you know this, but building a temple takes a really long time. And today we're going to learn a story about how it was not very quick and some hard stuff happened. So if you could please turn in your Bibles to Ezra chapter 4. Can you please flip in your Bibles to Ezra chapter 4 verses 1 through 2? It says, Now when the adversaries of Judah and Benjamin heard that the returned exiles were building a temple to the Lord, the God of Israel, they approached Zerubbabel and the heads of the father's houses and said to them, Let us build with you. For we worship your God as you do, and we have been sacrificing to him. All right, so an adversary is like an enemy, right? And so the enemies wanted to come help rebuild the temple? Does that make sense to you? I think I feel a little confused. Let's see what happens in verse 3. But Zerubbabel, Jeshua, and the rest of the heads of fathers' houses in Israel said to them, you have nothing to do with us in building a house to our God. But we alone will build to the Lord, the God of Israel, as King Cyrus, the king of Persia, has commanded us. Okay, so Zerubbabel told the enemies, no, you cannot help us. Let's see if that seems like the right thing to do or not. Ezra chapter 4 verse 4 says, then the people of the land discouraged the people of Judah and made them afraid to build. Oh my goodness, can you guys believe it? Those people 
stopped them from building the temple. I think that shows that they really were adversaries or enemies, right? Because if they really loved God, if they really wanted the temple to be rebuilt, why would they scare the people into stopping building it? They said they wanted to help, but I don't think they were really going to help. And then when Zerubbabel told them, no, we aren't going to let you help. This is from God. Then they scared the people and nobody would rebuild the temple. You know, if you look at the dates and the timeline, they stopped working on the temple for about 15 years. That's a long time. Imagine the people's emotions being so excited to come back from exile and then so excited to rebuild the temple, and then so scared that you didn't even work on it for 15 years. Well, God always has a plan, right? And so the Bible tells us that after that period of time, God sent two prophets to help the people, Haggai and Zechariah. I don't know if you remember, but last week we talked about a verse from Haggai, right? Do you remember that? The glory of the latter temple will be greater than the former. Do you remember that? Haggai 2.9. Well, God sent Haggai and Zechariah, two prophets, to tell everybody that it was time to start rebuilding the temple. God wanted to encourage his people. He wanted them to trust him to get his house built. No matter what the adversaries were saying. Because who's stronger? God or adversaries? God And so God sent these prophets to encourage the people, and they began to rebuild. As they were rebuilding, the governor, whose name was Tatanai, saw that they had started to rebuild. And he came to them and he said, wait, do you guys have permission to be rebuilding the temple? And Zerubbabel and Joshua, two people that were in charge, said, yes, right to the king. King Cyrus said that we could rebuild the temple. Well, the king now was named King Darius. I don't know if you remember, there was a King Darius when Daniel was in the lion's den. I'm pretty sure these are two different Dariuses, but if anybody knows for sure, let me know. Because sometimes with the order of the kings of Babylon and Persia and all of the, you know, Assyria, all the places they were exiled to, it can be hard to keep track of the kings. But I think this was a second Darius. If I'm wrong, let me know. So... Tatanai wrote to King Darius and he said, Dear King Darius, the Israelites have begun rebuilding a temple to God, their one true God, right? And uh, Tatanai said, Is this okay? Is this allowed? And while they were waiting for the response, they just kept building the temple. They thought, We will listen to God. We will listen to what God has told us through the prophets. We will not quit again. We are going to keep rebuilding. And finally, Tatanai got an answer from King Darius. Let's read what it said. In Ezra chapter 6, it says, Then Darius the king made a decree. And when he found what King Cyrus had said, a record, in the first year of Cyrus the king, Cyrus the king issued a decree concerning the house of God at Jerusalem. Let the house be rebuilt, the place where sacrifices were made, and let its foundations be retained. And then later in the letter, King Darius said that King Cyrus had said to the people, Stay away from the workers in Jerusalem. Don't bother them and don't try to stop them. Give them whatever they need. And if anyone tries to destroy God's temple, may God destroy that person. Wow, you guys. So King Darius remembered what King Cyrus had said, and he let the people continue to build the temple. He gave them help to make the temple wonderful. And he said that no one could mess with the temple because it was God's temple. And see, when we do things for God, no matter how hard it is, when we trust that God is in control, no matter what happens, It's all going to be okay, even if it seems different than we thought. Those people probably thought they would not have to wait that long to rebuild the temple. They probably thought they'd start and they'd finish. But they waited 15 whole years to get started again, right? And that was after 70 years of exile. So 
King Darius told Tatanai that they could finish building. And finally, after a lot of hard work, the temple was completed. How do you think the people felt? The people were so, so happy. They finally had a place to go and worship God. After 70 years of being in exile, after over 15 years of being home but not having a temple, they had a place to go to worship the one true God. Then the Bible tells us it was time for Passover. Passover is a holiday that the Jewish people celebrated to remember how God rescued them out of slavery when they were in Egypt. And we know, I don't know if you remember this, but Passover is, happens right when Holy Week happens. When it, it's when we lead up to Jesus dying on the cross. And so the people got to celebrate Passover. They got to remember how God had saved them for hundreds and hundreds of years. And they were so happy. And we today, when we celebrate Easter, when we honestly pray or read our Bible or talk about Jesus, we are doing the same thing as the Israelites did. We can remember and celebrate what God has done for us. You know, I've only been alive 29 years and I can think of like a thousand million things that God has done in my life. I can think about when I was a child, when Jakey was a child, that's my brother, when I've been a grown up, I can think of all of these things that God has done for me. And I can think of things that my mom has told me that God has done in her life, things that I know God has done in my dad's life. But even more, when I open the Bible, I can see what God has been doing for thousands and thousands of years. My 29 years is tiny, the smallest little part. You might be seven. Your seven years are a tiny little part. But those seven years that you have, or maybe you're 10 years old, so you've known the Lord for 10 years, those years matter because they have taught you about Jesus. But think about what has been going on for thousands of years. God's plan is for all of time. And we are so blessed that we get to be a part of God's plan, even for a little bit. And so when the temple was rebuilt, those people had a very special part in God's story. And when they celebrated Passover, they remembered what God had done thousands of years earlier. When we celebrate Easter, we remember what Jesus did for us thousands of years ago, right? God is always at work in the lives of his people. And we are really lucky because we are God's people. God loves everyone in the whole world. He just wants people to come to know him and we get to know him. And one way we get to know him is by hanging out every week. So thank you guys for hanging out with me today. And I'm going to close us in prayer. Dear Jesus, I thank you so much that today we got to remember you. We got to learn about the temple being rebuilt and how this was so special to the people because they wanted to come spend time with you. Thank you that because of what Jesus has done, the Holy Spirit can live in our hearts and we can spend time with you anytime we want. Jesus, thank you that the people celebrated Passover, remembering how you rescued them out of slavery. And when we think of Passover, we remember that you died on the cross for our sins, that you are the great sacrifice for sin, Lord God. And we praise you and we thank you. I pray that everyone has a great day, that they praise and worship your name, and Jesus, that we grow closer and closer to you every day. We love you. In your holy name we pray. Amen. All right, guys. Great job today. I'll see you guys later. Bye.